كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دلي يقد من شجره مباركة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم صدق الله العظيم My dear respected brothers and sisters Firstly, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صالح, good job we are in this world and we have been created in a way that we are between two different worlds. There's a world beyond this world and there's a world we're living in. A lot of the times people have questions about Islam, about Allah, about the religion of Islam, about the Sharia, and they should not really answer the question until they look at both the worlds. Because our lives is not ending here only. The atheist will tell you the moment your eyes close, your heart stops beating, you're dead and you're finished. But Allah Azza wa Jal in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He revealed a new word. The Arabs used to use the word mata, mot, meaning death. Death means life has cut off, this person's body has stopped with the heart beating inside and the body is not going to move anymore. Death to them meant that the body, if you don't bury it in the ground, will decompose. That's the meaning of death. But there was nothing beyond that. There was nothing at all. This person is finished. Finished means completely finished. However, when Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in the Quran about death, He used the word yutawaffa. Yutawaffa in the Quran means a person traveling. This person, when he's died, Allah said yutawaffa, meaning. He's being transferred to another world. Transferred. The word is transferred. Each time somebody dies, they don't die. They only transfer to another world. So all of us must remember that death is not the end of life. Death is only a doorway to a new life. When we come to death, we come to a door that door opens, we enter, it closes. And the people on this side see a closed door. But me, if I travel through there and go to another, to, through that door, I see a new world. I'm in a complete new world. This is my new life. This is going to be your new life. So anybody who asks me a question about Islam, I need to give them an answer based on two worlds not one world. So for example, if they say to me, are you a person, you know, if they say, let me give an example. 
If they say, for example, you're a sister, you're wearing a hijab, and it's 40 degrees out there, and you're still wearing the hijab, and you must be sweating inside, you must be really hot, and they say to you, what's wrong with you? Why are you wearing a hijab? Why don't you take it off? Get some fresh air. Feel good. Feel that you're free. Why are you doing that? Your hijab is not based on this world. If your hijab was based on this world, then it will be based upon the air, the density, the atmosphere, the heat. You would think to yourself, when it's a hot day, I'm not going to wear the hijab. And if I feel cold, I may or may not wear the hijab. If it was based on this world alone, then fine, go ahead. Wear as much lipstick and makeup as you want and do your hair up and do what you like. You're free. But it's not based on this world alone. And I'd like to say, my sisters, you have already been created beautiful anyway. You're already beautiful anyway. But when you put all these extra things on, then the men, you kill them. They are half shaheed. And you want to make them full shaheed, then you go grab them. They're taking time to get it. No good, good Saleh. My sisters, it's not based on this world alone. You wear the hijab because Allah is watching you. You wear the hijab because Allah has told you to try and show a man that I am a woman of dignity. I have got my own izza and dignity. And my dignity is that you must not touch me unless I am married to you. And the marriage is also something which Allah has made for us in a system so that me and you don't get together and have a child that we did not plan and a child who does not have a legal father because when that child grows up there will be many other problems and if I fear oh my god my mother my father if they hear what I did this woman is pregnant then I or you may decide to have an abortion. And that child that is inside there, we want to get rid of the child before the child is even born. These are all crimes. These are all crimes. And people need to understand why we Muslims don't have this relationship before marriage is because we have another world. We have Allah that is watching us right now. Allah has revealed in the Quran marriage, it's a sacred thing. And it keeps us together in a bond with ahkam and with rulings. So the man has responsibility and the woman has responsibility. And they're not going to treat each other as boyfriends and girlfriends. Allah has said clearly in the Holy Quran, وَلَا مُتَّخِذِي أَخْدَانِ and he has said, Wala muttahidati akhdan. Look in the Quran, Surah Ma'idah, Surah number five, ayah number five, you will find Allah has said, No boyfriends, no girlfriends. Why? Because we live a life based on two worlds, not on one world. My friends, we are in a very different world today. Our world tells us you are free. Now let me ask you a question. 20, 30 years ago in Turkey, let's say 30 years ago in Turkey, how many TV stations, when you put your television on, how many different TV programs could you watch 30 years ago? How many? Was it one? If it's one, put your, hand, put your finger up, one? Okay. How many choices do you have today? 
How many? You, have you got count or you lost count? You lost count, yes? You've got the satellite. On the satellite, how many programs do they give you? How many? 300, 400, 500 maybe? More? 500, 500, okay. Now, you, have you got more choice or less choice? More choice or less choice? More, yes? Now, are you more free or are you less free? You feel you're more free. You've got channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, all the way to channel 500. Then you've got, if you want to install another satellite, you can install another one. You've got more, 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 more choice. And you think you're free, but you're not free. The more choice they give you, the more of a slave you are. I'm a slave. Why? Because when there was only one channel, one channel only, I can only watch that channel, and that one channel can, make me, can attract me. There's only one thing that can attract me. So if I'm not interested, if I don't like the program, I will switch it off. I will sit down, maybe do something else. When I have two channels, if I don't like one, then I think they tell me I'm free to choose between two. So I get happy. But in reality, there's two things now that can attract me and imprison me and make me a slave. Because if I don't like one, and that one I want to switch off, I'll switch, I'll take the remote control, I'll look, next one, ah, I like something, I am trapped. I have been caught. Now, when you have 500 channels, you have got 500 slave masters who can all trap you and pull you in and keep you there. And if you look at a person, let me, let, let me uh, say that again, two things to look at. One is when you walk in a room where the television is on or the internet is on and somebody is watching YouTube or somebody is watching a program, one thing for you to do is to look at the TV. If you look at the TV, that's one thing you will look at but I'm going to ask you to do something else. I'm going to ask you to look at the people watching the TV. Have you seen people watching the TV? They're like this. That's them. They are trapped. They're not free. If one hasn't caught them, another one catches them. If you want freedom, then f the free man and the free woman is the one who has a heart that can completely give up the TV. That's when you're free. When the TV and the films and the programs don't catch you, so much and drag you and pull you inside. When they don't control your mind, then you're free. If they control your mind, if you are walking and you are doing zikr, you know zikr? I'll show you zikr. Look, this, yeah? Some people, they do zikr of different things all day. So which football team is, is a big football team in, in Turkey? What is it? Ikhtilaf, <laughs> ikhtilaf. La ilaha illallah. Name me one. Fenerbahce? Fenerbahce. Okay, give me another one. Galatasaray. Galatasaray. Okay. So if you have, would you say Fenerbahce? 
Fenarwachi gol. So some people are there all day. You know, Fenarwachi is going to play 7.30 in the evening all day. Fenarwachi, 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 Fenarwachi. Fenarwachi, Fenarwachi. Their mind is thinking of goals. How Fenarwachi is going to get together? How in his mind he's sitting here, he's dreaming. He's dreaming this one curls the ball. And that other one puts his feet up and bam, in the goal. And he's sitting here. <sighs> and Fenarvachi haven't even started. They haven't even reached there. And this other one is watch. What is it? Gal, gal? Galatasaray. The other one saying Galatasaray, Galatasaray, Galatasaray. Gal. That one, Fenarvachi, 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 Galatasaray, Galatasaray. All day, all day, he's thinking of the team, when they're going to play. When 7.30 is coming, he's there already, 7 o'clock. So half an hour before he's sitting there, he's watching the, the stats, he's watching the players, he's watching which one is going to be on the field. He's, he's, he can't wait. And when they start, his whole attention is there. It's taken, dragged in for 90 minutes. And after 90 minutes, if they play extra time, then he sits there for extra time. Then after extra time, when he's finished, he will pick up the phone. And this Galatasaray will call the Fenarachi and say, ha, 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 ha. And Fenarachi will hide. He will hide. He will not want to know because today is 3-0. Three, three Okay, so he wants to hide. And now this one spends a lot of time talking to him. Oh, you lost, you lot losers, you lot can't play, you lot don't know football is. And all that is what? The mind has been enslaved. That's just one thing. Sometimes they make programs. Do they make programs here that are continuous every day? You have to watch half an hour. Do they make that here? Yes, give me a one, one program, famous one in Turkey, everyday people are watching. Is it called? Survivor. Survivor. Survivor, okay. All the people laughed, you all watch it. Yeah? Anyway, Survivor, because every day they put half an hour, every day you're enslaved. You ha if you want to be free, you have to pull away. You have to be a man or a woman who is not controlled by survivor, who is not controlled by football, who is not controlled by the late night movie, who is not controlled by 500 channels. That's a free person. If I can choose between my phone and my tasbih, and I can choose because this is one world, this is another world. This is one whole world, this is another whole world. My ibadah is for the next world. My akhirah is the next world. My masjid is the next world. My time, will, what will I do? Will I use time for this world or for that world? I can decide. Now, I'm not asking all of you to give up the whole of the world. No. What I'm asking you to do is to become free. The free person can choose between the family and can choose between friends and choose between technology and choose between anything else. The free person is the one who can say no. Let me repeat that. The free person can say no. Most of us are slaves. So you have to get pulled, pulled, you say yes. But the free person can be strong and say no. For example, if you have a friend who smokes, okay? You have a friend who smokes. Then you have a second friend who smokes. Both of them smoke. You do not smoke, but you like these people. They're your friends. If you feel you become obliged and you feel that they, ha they are having an effect on your mind. And as you sit with them, they say to you, hey, 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 Whew. try one, try one. 
If at that time you say no very strongly, I'm not going to be your friend again if you offer me a cigarette, then you are free. But if the friendship becomes such that you feel everybody is smoking, everybody is laughing at me, everybody thinks I'm weird, everybody thinks I'm backward, and I have to smoke, then you are a slave to friendship. Friendship has spoiled you. Why? It spoiled your next world. We have to be free people. And if you, take, if you find people who are smoking or they are taking drugs, then you have a choice. Your choice is, I will give da'wah to these people. And there's going to be three, one of three outcomes. One of three outcomes. Number one, either my friends will influence me in the future. They are stronger than me. I am weaker. They are stronger. And over time, I will also start to take drugs. In this case, you need to finish the friendship quickly, fast, move away, leave them, get rid of their numbers or change your telephone number. Don't have such friends. Don't keep them in your company because you will be sucked in, you will become a slave of the drugs and the drugs will ruin your life. That's number one. Number two, I feel my friends and I, we're equal. They are not stronger than me. I am not stronger than them. But I will try to influence them and get them out of drugs. If that is the case, then fine. You can keep them as friends, but only on one condition. That one condition is your near, your intention should be, I want to become stronger than them, influence them, and make them stop taking drugs. Then it's okay and it's halal for you to have that friendship. And number three is you are stronger than, than them. You know you can influence them. You know you can change them. In that case, you should keep your friendship and you should try and get them out of drugs. These are three conditions. But number one is, if you are weaker, they are stronger, then you need to end the relationship. Why? Because you will forget about your next world. And you will forget about the real world. And you will become a slave to these drugs and you will ruin your life. And ruining your life is in two places. Number one, in this world, you will ruin your lungs inside. You will ruin your heart. You will ruin your blood system. You will ruin your thinking. Because people who take drugs, they get affected with their thinking. They, they are a slave to the drug. When they have the drug, they feel very good. They feel better than normal people. They feel they are in Jannah. They're in heaven. They feel they are with Hurain. They feel they are roaming around. They can do what they want. That's, they get a very high. But what happens when the drug awareness finishes? This is where normal people are. This is where normal people are. This is where the people with drugs are, when they take the drugs. But when their drugs awareness finishes, they drop lower, lower than normal people. That is the danger. When they drop, they drop, and they have a lot of hallucinations. Sometimes they can see things. Sometimes they hear things. Sometimes their own mind fools them. Sometimes they don't know what they're doing. They could fall off a bridge and kill themselves. They could go with friends and they could do something very silly. And they don't even know they did it. That's why 
our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Kullu muskirin haram." Everything that intoxicates you, everything that intoxicates your mind is haram, it is forbidden. Why? There's two dangers. One in this world, I will spoil my body, I will spoil my lungs, I will spoil my brain, I will spoil my heart, I will spoil my body, I will spoil my relationship with my family. I will so spoil and I will ruin my relationship with my studies. I will ruin my, my relationship with my financial situation, my money. I will spend it in the wrong thing. And the next trouble is when I go to the akhirah, when I go to the next world, then Allah will ask me and say, I gave you a body. This was amana. This was a trust. How did you use it? How did you use the mouth that was an amana? How did you use the eyes that was an amana? This hand, this was not yours. This was mine. I gave it to you. I gave you the brain. So what did you do with that brain? And what did you do with that hand? Did you take the drugs? And did your mind say to you, this is wrong? Well, you know what? This was from the angel that I placed inside your heart. My brothers, my sisters, every one of us, according to a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, has got one angel that tells us good things and one shaitan, one devil that tells us bad things. So even when you have got something that pulls you, and wants to enslave you, wants to make you its slave, at that time you will hear inside you, hey, this is wrong. This is wrong. I shouldn't do this. I should move away. If I take this, it will harm me. It will make life difficult for me. That's what the person will hear inside. How, where does this come from? This comes from the angel inside your body and my body. Allah will say on the day of judgment, I gave you an angel. That angel spoke to you. That angel reminded you this is wrong. But the shaitan said, let me do it once. Just one little time. One little time. And when I do it one little time, after that, I'll stop. Let me taste it. Let me see how it is. That's how shaitan gets you in any addiction. Whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol and intoxicants drinking, shaitan will say to you, if I drink this once, what's going to happen? I can't get drunk. So he makes you drink once. Ah, I'm okay. See, I see, I hear properly, I see properly, I think properly. Mm, mm, mm. So he takes another one. And he likes the taste of this. Ah, I'm, I'm still okay, I'm still okay. And he takes another one, takes another one, till he's drunk. He starts slowly. I'm still okay. I'm still good. Now what happens is he says, oh, you know, inside he has a clash. And something says to him, that was wrong, 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 stop. So he stops. He moves away. He says to himself, no, 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 I'll never do that again. I'll never do that again. And slowly, he becomes better. He can see properly, he can think properly, he can hear properly. Then, shaitan made him taste it once. He says to him inside, he makes him remember the taste. So the man, the next time, or the woman, the next time they see the bottle, they want to taste again. And when he gets them a second time and a third time, then this thing 
has enslaved them. They are slave of this drink now. Now they're addicted. They have to drink. They have to drink. Now he drinks. He's in front of his wife. And he doesn't know what he's saying. He's in front of his children. And he sometimes says rubbish. Sometimes says horrible things to his wife. He swears at his wife. He wants to hit his wife. He wants to move his children away. And he's sitting down on the sofa. Sometimes he doesn't even know how to stop his urine. On the sofa he will urinate. While he's sitting down because his aql, his intellect has been affected by the drink. By the way, this drink is halal, okay? Okay, this one is halal for me, okay? Nothing wrong here. Now, the same with gambling. Do you have a problem of gambling in, in Turkey? Gambling? Do you have gambling or you don't have no casinos? No casinos? Okay, let me tell you a danger. Maybe people don't understand. There is online gambling on the internet. Are they closed all by the government? No, some of them are open. Ah, there's the danger. The danger is people now are gambling on their phones. They're gambling on the internet. They're putting their money straight from the bank. Straight, it's all online banking. Click of a button, press the enter, money has been gone. And they're playing on the internet, they're gambling. And this is another addiction. And people soon, they move from gambling the money in their pocket to gambling money they have in the bank, to gambling the whole house, risking their house, risking their life. Why? Because they got addicted to another slave master. These are all slave masters. And they want to ruin our world here, and they want to ruin our world in the next world. And if you feel that you are free, you are not free until the day you can go past hundreds of shops, many, many shops with alcohol and you have no desire inside for the alcohol. You are free. The day you can be next to a gang of people who are all taking drugs they're smoking, they're taking drugs, they, they are making themselves feel they're in another world, and you walk past them and you have no desire, not a single percent of desire to try and test their drugs, you are free. The day when you can move on the streets and on the metro and underground, and in normal life, in the streets, in the masjids, in the malls, and the shopping markets. And you're a man, and there are many women who are walking up and down the elevator, going down, they're going in one shop, coming back out. And as you walk, you see many billboards advertising products with a woman smiling. And you have no desire to look at her, no desire to look at the women, no desire to be pulled by their looks. And if you're a woman, no desire to look at men who are walking, who are talking, who are standing there. You have no desire, then you are free. You are the most free person this world has got. You deserve to be shown to others and you deserve to be shown to the whole world this is what a free person is. She has got freedom. He has got freedom who has no desire for these things. The day when you have a smartphone, an iPhone or a Samsung or any other smartphone in your hand and you are sitting there all alone. Nobody's with you. You're alone in your house, in your bedroom, on your bed, with your phone. 
and you are browsing the internet. You are looking, swiping left, right, browsing the internet. You might be browsing YouTube or browsing Google or any other website in Turkey. And you have no desire for pornography. No desire to see people naked. No desire to be pulled towards something that many people there are trapped by. Many people outside there are slaves of pornography. And you sit there with taqwa, with Allah's awareness. You sit there, you look at the news, you look at um, certain products you want to buy, you visit certain places on the internet you need to go to, fine, no problem. But you have no desire for pornography, no desire for anything haram, you have got true freedom. You need to be shown to the world. This is what freedom is. My friends, freedom is not to become somebody who has 500 channels and then they start watching haram with their eyes. That is not freedom. That is destruction. That is halaka, halak. You say in Turkey, halak? This is destruction. Why? In this world, you watch pornography and then you go to your wife. Your wife now looks not so good. Why? You damage yourself. You see these images, you see pictures, and then you come to your halal wife, to your wife that's been so good to you all these years, and you have little desire for her. You want her nose to look like this, and you want her eyes to have this, and you want her lips to be shaped up like this. Why? Because you saw those women on TV. Or if a woman wants her husband to look like this, look very you know, smart, elegant. Sometimes women might see these pictures on the movie, or even might be movie. They see a man with real muscles. Yeah? They see a man with six pack. Six pack is one, two, three here. And he's got a really good body. And they say, ah. And then they come back to the husband. The husband has one pack. <laughs> one. Not six pack, one pack. And they look at him, ah. Why? Because you damage yourself. Not every man is super. Not every woman is super. Everybody has been created very differently. And what they do is they take the most beautiful person. They make the most beautiful person and they will make them a film star. Let me tell you a secret. If you want to become an actor, if you want to become an actor, and you go and you start to be, try to become like an actor, let me tell you now, if you're not very, very, very handsome, or if you're not very, very pretty, then forget it. They have little interest in you, unless they want you to make you look like the big, bad, ugly enemy in the movie. They don't have no interest in you. If you look at Hollywood in America, most of the TV or the movie stars, they are all very, very good looking. They are amongst the population of people they are less than 1%. Less than 1%. So when me and you watch them, we are thinking these are normal people. They are not normal people. They are less than 1%. Their beauty, their smartness, their hair, their makeup, their body, 
is maybe 0.001 of the population. And people look at that, then they want to get married, and they say, this girl, no. No, no. This girl, no. This girl, no. This girl, no. No, 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 no. Why? Because they're looking for 0.001. My friend, you need to go to Hollywood to get married. You need to travel to America to get married. This is wrong. People judging people because of the face on the movies is wrong. You are a slave to celebrities. You are a slave. Don't even become a slave to makeup. Some women, wallahi I'm telling you this, some women will never come out in front of people unless they put makeup on. Maybe their mother, their father, brother, sister can see them without makeup, fine. They will not see their friends. Not even their friends. They will never step outside the house without makeup. If you're like that, you are a slave. You are a slave to these products. And the people that made the makeup, they don't care about your face. They care about your pockets. They want money. They want fulus, fulus, you know, nukud, fulus. They want fulus. The whole of this system that wants us to become slaves of something they are more interested in the monies. So they will tell you you're free. If you want to choose, if you're a man and you want to choose another man or a woman or choose anyone you want, you're free. This is not freedom. This is not freedom. The more choices you give a person does not mean the more freedom you have. Because we need to look at what is the bargain on the other end, in the Akhirah. Because all of us, Muslims, non-Muslims, hijabis, non-hijabis, people who pray Salah, people who don't pray Salah, all of us are going through to the another world. To another world, to the Akhirah. And then we will look back and see what good we did and what damage we did to ourselves. My friends, today, there are people who are enslaved to their phones, to the degree. They are in their house sitting down. Their wife is sitting there. Husband is sitting here. Husband has his phone. Wife has her phone. He's talking to people outside the house. She's talking to people outside the house for one hour, two hours. They are not looking at each other. They are not talking to each other. They are in the same room. My friends, this will cause damage to the family life. Don't make this your slave master where your own children are waiting for you. But you have little time for them, but you have a lot of time for this. For Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, social media, emails, uh, WhatsApp, whatever it is, you have more time for that, less time for your family. This is causing damage to yourself. Why? Because love, see love inside here, if love is not there between you and your children, between the husband and wife every day, and the love starts to decrease, you've got another big problem. The family will not have strong bond. And if they're not strong, then you will feel in your own house, you will feel like a stranger. In your own house, you will feel like a stranger. And we don't want this to happen to ourselves. Now, the question is, how do you stop yourself from this addiction? If you're addicted to anything like drugs, or pornography, or sin, or alcohol, or anything, some people are addicted to a relationship of a boyfriend and girlfriend. Secret relationship. Nobody knows 
they think nobody knows except for two people. Him and her. But Allah says in the Holy Quran, when there are two people secretly whispering, Hey, how are you? I'm okay. When two people secretly whisper, Allah is the third. When four people secretly whisper, Allah is the fifth. When six people secretly, only they have this group, only they know who is saying what, Allah is the sixth or Allah is the seventh. مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ There are no three people that whisper or have a meeting except Allah is the fourth. And if there's five, Allah is the sixth. وَلَا أَدْنَى مِن ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْثَرَ إِلَّا هُوَ مَعْهُمْ أَيْنَمَا كَانُوا There's no less than that, two people. There's no more than that, nine people, ten people. Except Allah is with them wherever they are. Some people are addicted. They're in love. They're in love with this girl or the girl is in love with this boy. And the parents may not agree. Or the parents want the studies to finish. And this person is in deep love. They can't think properly. Some people when they're in love, they can't eat properly. They can't sleep properly. Love is something that can take over your mind. That's why Allah said, have marriage, and if you can't get married, leave it. The first thing is for a person to try and control the eyes. If you can control, if I can control the eyes from the beginning, then there won't be a problem. So, when I'm walking, I look down. Allah says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell the believing men to lower their gaze, lower their eyesight, and to protect their private parts. Then Allah said in the next verse, Surah Nur, Surah number 24, Ayah number 31 and 33, you will find it there. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضُنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنْ Tell the believing women to lower their gaze. So if we are walking out there and I keep looking down and she looks down, then we pass by one another. I did not see her. She did not see me. Whew. You understand? Did they understand this? Yeah? Halas. Yani, I'm, I'm free. But if I looked at her, she might see me and she might look at me and say, nah, too ugly. I'm still, whoo. Did they get that? And now they got it. But if I look at her, and she looks at me, and she, huh? And, huh? and we both are attracted to each other. Ah, you are now being a slave to the shaitan's arrow. In one hadith, it says, Shaitan has arrows, and he pulls the arrow and he aims. And he waits for two people to look bang in the heart. And then he's fallen in love with her. She's fallen in love with him. First is the love of the eyes. Then this person says, uh, how are you? Are you okay? Can I have your number? Why? Because he wants to talk. Now he wants the love of the tongue and he wants the love of the ears he's got love of the eyes first love of the tongue love of the ears 
And if she accepts and they both start to communicate through their phone to one another, through social media, through the phone, they say, how are you, this and that, oh, I'm okay, and I'm this. <laughs> My friends, the first thing in love, anything you find new, it's very beautiful. It's lovely. The first time you, if I ask you, do you want to go to a beach with golden sand and the waters are coming like waves and back and forth? Do you want to go there, nice hot sunny day? You say, man, please, please take me there, take me there. So you go, it's wonderful. The breeze is coming and the sun is shining and the waves are there. It's so nice to sit there and the beach is wonderful. Is very good. But if you stay there for a long time, then you become like the local people. The local people, they like the beach, but they don't want to stay there forever. The local people, they enjoy the beach a little bit, but they know that this is not something where you, this is not a place where you can live forever and forever. You have to go back into the city. You have to buy foods and items. You have to cook. You have to clean. And the beach is only one little part of life. My friend, the first time you see her, the first time she sees you, it's like the beach. It's all sunny. It's all golden. It's all lovely. You can see never a bad day ever coming. Oh, no, no, no. Me and her, never. Me and her were made by Allah perfect. Adam and Hawa. They think one is for the other. But my friend, after you get together for some time, then when the normal life comes in, the normal life comes in, then you will feel the real stress of life and responsibilities. That's when you find out how much love you have. Love is not just for the eyes only. Love has to be with commitment. You have to commit yourself. You have to strive to keep the other person happy. You have to feed the other person. You have to give the person shelter. You have to give them clothing. You have to look after them when they're ill and they're sick. This is love. You have to look after them when they're weak. You have to look after them when a woman is pregnant and she gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Allah has said in the Holy Quran, the mother, your mother, carried you. Weakness over weakness. Day by day she became weak. Week after week she became very, very fragile. Every month she got heavier and heavier. When she sat down, it hurt her. When she got up, her back hurt. When she got in the car, she was uncomfortable. When she walked, she got tired. That's your girlfriend. When she gets pregnant, are you going to look after her or are you going to leave her? The boyfriend and the girlfriend, they don't see that. They see a beautiful girl, a beautiful boy. Nothing can ever go wrong. My friend, when you go through your wife becoming pregnant and then she becomes so tired, well, first she becomes sick, she vomits, she, do, she cannot look after herself sometimes, she cannot take certain smells, it irritates her, she wants to eat certain foods, she's got a craving, her hormones are moving a lot in her body. And she is not the same person you saw when you first met her. Then she becomes pregnant and every day she gets heavier and heavier until she gives birth. And when she gives birth, she's very, very tired. She needs a lot of rest. 
She's so tired. She can't get up the stairs. You need to bring her food. You need to bring her, sometimes bring her things that a normal person would, would go there and bring very quickly. You need to bring her that. And then you know what happens? When the baby comes, her love is now for, the, for you, the husband, and for the baby. It's divided. Huh? Me? Huh? Where am I? You don't love me like before? No, my friend. There's three people here now. Before you were boyfriend or girlfriend or husband and wife, whatever, there's only two people. Her eyes, 100% for you. Your eyes, 100% for her. Today, there's another baby. That baby takes father's attention, mother's attention, and the husband and wife give each other 50-50 half. 50-50 half attention. And when another baby comes, it's 25-25. Another baby comes, it's 20-20-20. 20, 20, 20. 20 for wife, 20 for first child, 20 for second child, 20 for third child. What happened to you and her? Nothing can go ever wrong. Ah, no, no, this is life. That's why Allah said marriage. Why? Because boyfriend has got no time to look after a girlfriend who's got babies, children. These are a burden. They're stress. They're a burden. He don't want these children. He wants her, her to be young, good looking, no other responsibilities. And you know, I tell you another thing. A woman who gives birth, her body is not the same anymore. Her body is not the same anymore. A boyfriend does not want to think about that. He wants to just think about her perfect body, perfect. She wants a perfect man. My friends, when responsibilities come, then you understand who is who. So now I'm going to tell you, if you're addicted to something, how do you get out of it? The only way to get out of it is to connect the heart with Allah Azza wa Jal. Because you want to become the slave of Allah. If you become the true slave of Allah, not the slave of technology, not the slave of boyfriend and girlfriend, not the slave of money, not the slave of drugs, not the slave of alcohol, not the slave of gambling, not the slave of friends, if you want to free yourself, then you have to become the slave of Allah. Then Allah has so much effect on your heart. He becomes so strong on your mind and your heart that you become a true strong person. Then you can break the shackles. You can break the, uh, the, the cuffs. You can break the iron chains that lock you up. You can break all of that if your heart is connected to Allah. How do you connect the heart to Allah? You have to start to remember Him. And you have to do dhikr. And there's three types of dhikr. Number one, you have the tongue moving. But the heart, the mind is absent. The heart and mind is not connected. So I say, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And as I'm saying la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, my mind is somewhere else. My mind is thinking about my problems. My mind is thinking about my life, my studies. My life, my mind is thinking about my worries, it's worried. And I say, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha For this one, I get reward. Allah gives me ajr, I get reward. But, there's no effect inside me. There's no change in my heart. Nothing will change inside me. The second dhikr is, when the tongue and, oh sorry, the second dhikr is, when the mind is thinking of Allah, but the tongue is not saying anything. 
So right now I sit here. I think of Allah. I think of Allah. I'm not saying anything. My tongue is not moving. But I just think of Allah. Allah is watching me. Allah is watching me. Allah is watching me. There's an effect that takes place. My heart starts to get nur and light. The hadith of Muslim says that when you do a good deed and a good action, the angel will throw a white dot on the heart. I think more about Allah, only Allah, only Allah. The angel will throw another white dot on the heart. And I think more about Allah or I do a good deed, any good deed, any good deed, sadaqah, any good deed. The heart will have a white dot. I pray salah, heart gets a white dot. I move towards giving somebody da'wah, calling them to Allah. I get a white dot, white dot, white dot, white dot, until it can become all white. But the same hadith says, when a person makes a sin, commits a sin, then the angel will throw a black dot. And if I sin again, another black dot. And I sin again, another black dot. Until the whole heart can become hard. So it's all to do with the heart. Yes, sir. Affedersiniz, kıymetli misafirlerimiz. Sizlere dağıtacağımız kağıtlara konuyla alakalı sorularınızı yazıp bize iletebilirsiniz. Ee, sizin de bildiğiniz üzere kısıtlı bir zamanımız var. Elimizden geldiğince... Hocamız yanıtlamaya çalışacaktır. Thank you, sorry for disturb. Tamam. <gülüyor> tamam. Teşekkürler. Rica ederim. It's all about the heart. If the heart has white dots, white dots, it has, it has nur, it has light. It gets strong. Allah's rahma, Allah's mercy comes to the heart. And then the heart wants to remember Allah more and more. Then the love of Allah increases. And when the love of Allah increases, I want to think more about the akhirah. I want to connect myself with Allah. I want to find out who is my prophet. I want to follow his footsteps. I want to study the seerah. I want to go to the Quran. I want to read the ayats. And when I read the ayats with a heart of nur, it makes me cry. Very easily, it will make you cry. When a person has nur in the heart, they listen to Quran and they start to cry. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتُهُمْ إِيمَانًا When the... When the Verses of the Quran are recited to the believers, the Iman increases. The Iman increases once they hear the verses of the Quran. So this is a heart of light. And the opposite happens if I start to sin, darkness, darkness comes until the heart becomes hard. Then when I hear Quran, it doesn't affect me. When I see someone calling me to Islam, I'm not too attached. Why? Because my heart, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has explained in the hadith, it's like a utensil, like a plate or a bowl, a utensil. If you have it up this way, when the rain falls down, Imam Ghazali says this, when the rain falls down, it collects in the bowl. The rain water will collect. But if you take the same bowl and you turn it upside down and the rain falls down, nothing will come inside. The same as the heart. When the heart has got nur and light, it's this way. And it collects Allah's mercy. It collects Allah's rahmah inside. But when the heart has sinned, it turns this way. And none of the Allah's mercy goes inside the heart. And for me to make myself better, to remove myself from addiction, I have to connect myself with Allah. The, this is two. Number three dhikr. The third dhikr is when the tongue and the mind, both of them are busy with Allah. So now I'm saying, La ilaha illallah. When I say that, 
and I, and I say it with my tongue, my mind is thinking there is no deity, there is no control of anyone over me, there is no God, there is no supreme power to empower me except Allah. La ilaha illallah. There is no addiction, there is no drugs, there is no world, there is no dunya that is going to affect me. Illallah except Allah. So la ilaha is negating. I negate the world. I negate the world. I negate my influence of this world. I say no, no, no. This does not exist. The only thing exists is the power of Allah. Is the quwa and the power of Allah. And when I train my mind, my mind thinks of that. My tongue moves with it. Then slowly, slowly I become stronger and stronger. Now, I want you to do a quick practice with me. So I'm going to ask you to join with me in dhikr. But anybody who says it's bid'ah, then you are wrong. Because this is a one-off. I have not come here as a big hujja who's going to come and start a new movement in Turkey. No. I come to you with the simple message of the Quran because Allah has said Allah says you remember me I will remember you so we want to test this so I want you to say this with me now I want you to say Allah say that Right now you said Allah, Allah said, O oh Mustafa, Allah said, O oh Fatima, Allah said, O oh Zainab, Allah said, O oh Muhammad, if your name is Muhammad here, yeah. Allah said, O oh Farah, Allah said, O oh so and so. Right now you said Allah, Allah said the same, he took your name. Why? Allah says in a hadith of Bukhari, narrated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي عَبْدِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ When my servant remembers me in his mind, I, remember me, I will remember him in my being, in my special being. وَإِذَا ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَئٍ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَئٍ خَيْرٍ مِّنْ when my servant will remember me in a gathering, I will remember him in a gathering better than that. So right now you said Allah. Allah said to all the angels, Allah said, Oh so and so. Allah said right now, He said, Oh Ishaq. He said, Oh Imran. Allah said, Oh Maryam. Whatever your name is, Allah said that right now. So there is a connection. When you say one thing, Allah says another. In a hadith of Tirmidhi, it says, when the servant says, La ilaha illa anta, there is no God besides you. Allah says, according to the hadith, Allah says, La ilaha illa ana, there is no God besides me. Allah refers to himself. And he says, there's no God besides me. So when the servant says a dhikr, Allah is also remembering the servant. And I want you to test this with me. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes so that we can gain our concentration. I want you to close your eyes so that we can gain our concentration. It's not for any bid'ah, don't worry. It's a one-off. And anybody who wants to know, um, I don't think it's translated, right? You know the Salafi Sufi talk is not translated. Uh, these guys are gone from here. Okay, no problem. No problem. This one is not a bid'ah, don't worry. Okay, ready? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine 
I am now leaving the whole world. My time of death, my time of death, angels have picked me up and I'm traveling through the sky, through space, beyond the stars, right to the heavens and I'm traveling, traveling up, 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 up and the whole world is below me. Allah, 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 Please join me in this dhikr. Allah, 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 I will never see my family again. I will not see the people behind I left again. The only important thing to me in this new world is Allah. Allah, 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 Imagine the day of judgment is here. I am standing with all the people. My mother does not want to look at me. My father does not want to look at me. My brothers and sisters want to run away from me. My whole family wants to desert me. Nobody cares for me. No friends want to come near me. The only one that will care for me today and whose mercy I really, really need is Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. Allah, 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 Every person is being called by Allah one by one for how they use their body, how they use their amana, whether they took any drugs, whether they drank, whether they looked at something with their eyes that was haram, whether they listened to something with their ears that was haram. And everybody is being questioned one by one. And my turn is coming very near to go and stand in front of Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. Allah, 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 If Allah does not have mercy on me, then completely finish today. Because Jahannam and Hellfire is in front, and people are being thrown inside and Jannah is beyond there and it's only Allah that can forgive me. Allah, 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 I 
want you to open your eyes now. I want you to do one thing. Notice your breathing. If your breathing is little calmer than what it was before, if you're, if you're slightly more calm now, the way you're breathing, put your hands up. See, that's a lot of you. That's probably 70-80% of you. If you could have taken your mind with me as I was traveling right now to the Day of Judgment, I didn't think about the world, I didn't think about family, I didn't think about any technology, I didn't think about friends, I only thought about standing in front of Allah. If you did the same as me, then you have now felt the sweetness of dhikr. Dhikr has a sweetness. So sweet, it's sweeter than alcohol. Sweeter than technology. Sweeter than films. Sweeter than movies. Sweeter than relationship of men and women, boyfriend, girlfriend. Sweeter than that. Sweeter than drugs. Sweeter than smoking. Sweeter than any drug or any pornography or anything that you love on this earth. It gets so sweet that a person wants to only think of Allah. And a person will just be completely drowned in the dhikr of Allah. Allahu, 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 Allahu. If you feel that this is soothing, if you feel that this is real nice, then you need to take the different zikrs that are there and you need to put your mind and your tongue together and carry on doing it, carry on doing it and you will see slowly, slowly your mahabba, your love of Allah will increase. Your inclination will go towards the akhirah. You will slowly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so much you will cry because you miss him though you've never seen him with your eyes. You will love to stand up in prayer. You will go to sujood and you will want to stay there. And when you say the words in sujood, you will only have love increasing. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, 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 Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. So sublime, so exalted is my Lord who is the greatest. And for me as a human to get to the bottom, to put my nose on the ground, put my forehead on the ground, and put my hands and palms on the ground, and to feel I am a slave of Allah, that will make me feel very, very happy. You know why? You are a slave of Allah. You are nothing else. I am nothing else. I am a slave of Allah. You are a servant and a slave of Allah. And we need to find our reality. And when we find our reality, we will love that the best. There is a difference between somebody who starts his salah and says, 
Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Al-Din Iyaka Na'abdu Iyaka Na'sta'in 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 قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عبدون ما عبد ولا أنا عبد ما عبد ولا أنتم عبدون ما عبد لكم دين ولا دين الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي سمي الله من حضر الله أكبر سبحان ربي الله سبحان ربي الله سبحان الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي الله سبحان ربي الله سبحان ربي الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كرام دون يا كرام سنة the difference between this one and a person who starts the salah and they want to engage the heart is electrified. There is love coming out. There's a deep connection with Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawm, Al-Din, Iyaka, Na'abud, Wa Iyaka, Nasta'in. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين whether you understand or you don't understand the love is there there's love for Allah. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. 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 Sami'a Allah liman hamidah. ربنا ولك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى The heart has love The mind is connected the body feels that there's tingles going all the way down and there's no worry about the world. It's only you and Allah. That is the type of salah or the dhikr I did earlier with Allah, 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 Allah. لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا الله. Any ذكر you want to do, join the heart, make the mind feel connected, do it with passion, with desire. Try and think of the meanings of what you're saying. And when you do it like that, you become in love with the true and only love. Remember this, please. If you go from here and you forget everything. Remember this one thing. My love of this phone is as long as the phone lasts. My love for movies is as long as I can watch movies. My love for family is as long as my heart is beating and I am alive on this earth. My love for people for my addictions is as long as I am here on this earth. But the moment I die, love of family ends. Love of the world ends. I can't love the world anymore. I can't love my house. I can't love my family. I can't love my 
family or my children, my wife? No, because I will not see them again. The only love I can have in the next world is the love of Allah. There is no other love in the next world. All people of this world will turn against me on the Day of Judgment. Your best friend will become your worst enemy on the Day of Judgment. Because they want to snatch reward off you. They want to take ajr and hasanat off you. And you will see that the very friends you spend time with, you enjoyed their company, they want to now try and get you in trouble on the Day of Judgment. Why? Because he sees Jahannam. You see Jahannam. You want to take his good deeds, take anybody's good deeds, and save yourself from Jahannam. Everybody is going to try and do the same thing. Your own mother, own father will do you in, will stab you in the back, will try and take as much reward as they can from you. Your children, your wife, the people you gave your life to, until they know they're going to Jannah. When they know they're going to Jannah, then they want to help you. When they know Allah has said, okay, don't worry, you're not going to Jahannam, then they will come for their daughter, they'll come for the son, they'll come for the father, mother, they'll come for the friends trying to help them. But until we don't know that, everyone is going to be out there to get somebody else. Allah, Allah said in the Holy Quran, الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُونَ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ This is in Surah, uh, Surah Zukhruf, Surah number 43. Allah has said, best friends, best friends will become enemies of one another except if they are from the muttaqin. Except if they are from those people who are very aware of Allah and always thinking of Allah, that they stop themselves from sinning. Only those people will not be out to get one another. Allah says in the Holy Quran, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي The day when a man will run away from his brother, وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ He will run away from his mother, he will run away from his father, he will run away from his wife. He will run away from his children. That's the day of judgment. So my friends, the only love, true love, never ends, is the love of Allah. That love is so sweet on this earth, you're a free person. You won't be a slave to all these things if you have that love. That love is the one that will give you goodness on this earth, goodness in the next world. And that love is the one that when you go to the akhirah, if you have that love, you've got nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Because you have become someone who's close to Allah. Those who are close to Allah are the awliya of Allah. The awliya of Allah are not only the ones we say, you know, this one, he's got a big tomb around his grave. He's from the awliya. That's not the awliya only. They are awliya, yes. They are awliya, yes. But you and me, if we connect ourselves with, with Allah, we get close, we will become the awliya. Allah says, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Remember that the true awliya, these are the, the real awliya, the awliya of Allah, they have no fear, they have no grief. They have no fear, they have no grief. So if you want to escape from addiction and sin, engage your heart in dhikr. Then go and find out the sharia. Find out from the imams, from the people, how to practice Islam. Start to practice Islam and your heart is connected with Allah. You will get closer and closer and you will free yourself from all addictions, inshallah. Okay, I'm going to um, take these questions now one by one. And I will try and attempt to answer as many as I can get through. I want the organizers to tell me when to stop. Okay, so if the organizers can tell me when to stop, and I will carry on answering as many as I can. Question number one. 
what if our parents are addicted to something like cigarettes or alcohol? Since we can't argue with them, what should we do? If your parents are smoking or they're drinking, if they're addicted, you have a right to give them dawa in a nice way. You shouldn't argue, but you can say to them nicely to stop. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he told his father nicely to stop making the idols and stop worshipping the idols. He talked to him nicely. The same way you can talk nicely to your mother and father, there's nothing wrong. And if one way doesn't work, talk to them another way. If you're trying to give da'wah to your brother or to your sister, if you tried, then please don't try and snap at them. If you say, hey, don't take drugs, don't take this, it's bad for you. People hate that. You have to talk nicely, talk with a nice voice. When Musa alayhi salam was sent to Fir'aun, the worst zalim, the worst oppressor on this earth, Allah said, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَا O Musa, O Harun, go and talk with soft words, gentle way of talking to Fir'aun. So if we talk nicely, gently, inshallah, bi'ithnillah, this is the best way to give da'wah. I want to marry with my mustaqbal wife, who I loved, mashaAllah. But my parents say and give me unnecessary reasons. They reject me and my request. Please tell me and my parents to solve what it is. Uh, I want your help. Okay, Jazakumullah khair. The thing is, I don't know the reasons why your parents are saying no. If she is from a very good family, if she is a practicing woman, then they should say yes. But there will be many reasons why parents sometimes may say no. And I don't know the reasons. And I can't give you... I mean, if you understand English, then please watch a video of mine. If you understand the person of this, if you understand English, then go to YouTube and type in Happy Marriage Seminar. Happy Marriage Seminar on YouTube. And I will talk about this, especially how to talk to parents when parents don't agree. But now I don't know why they don't agree. If they've got a good reason, maybe they've got a good reason why you shouldn't accept. But I don't know. Maybe they don't have a good reason, I don't know. Could you give us some advice about quitting cigarettes? Okay, I'll give you a very easy way of quitting cigarettes. Insha'Allah. Say Insha'Allah. That's how many smokers we have. Sorry, joking. Say to yourself, every time I have a cigarette, I will pray two rakats. This is a very good method. Every time I have a cigarette, no problem, have the full cigarette. No problem. Two rakats. Two rakats. Wash your mouth. Use miswak. Wudu wudu, stand the musalla, pray nice two rakats, sajda to Allah. After I say dua, oh Allah, I am trying to stop from smoking, but I am weak. And I am asking for your help. I cannot do it myself. I know I'm going to smoke, and I'm going again to smoke. But I want you to help me, make me stronger. Go again. Then every time oh, you have a cigarette, two rakats. Come back. Every time cigarette, two rakats. Do two rakats, two rakats. Same thing. Do sajda, tahiyya, salam. Say, oh Allah, I want to stop, but I'm weak. I want you to help me. I'm addicted. I'm asking you, please help me. After a while, one hour, two hours, if you have another cigarette, come back, two rakats again. 
any addiction you have, if you carry on doing this and you make yourself do the two rakats, inshallah, you know, some I know one person, he had a relationship with a girl. Relationship with a girl. He wanted to stop. But he was in love, deep love with her. She couldn't get married to him. He can't get married to her because her mother said no. Her mother said, if you get married to this person, I will boycott you. I will, I will make sure no family member ever talk to you. So she was stuck. She was scared of her mother. So I said to him, I said, do two rakats. Every time you make contact with her, do two rakats. Ask Allah. It took him six months. Six months. But Alhamdulillah, finally, he gave it up. Because he knew he couldn't marry her. He wanted to get rid of her from his heart. He was addicted. He was talking to her on the phone. And Alhamdulillah, six months, every time he tried, he did two rakats, he asked Allah. He talked to her again, then two rakats, he asked Allah. He talked again to her over the phone, texting her. Two rakats again, two rakats, two rakats. Finally, Allah gave him the strength. Only Allah can give the strength, inshallah. How do, you, how do we balance our mind with our heart? Um, I don't understand how you balance. Um, I didn't understand. If whoever wrote this, if you can write it again, explain and then send it again. When someone, when someone in the internet site or at the school say bad words to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Islam, what should we do? If somebody says bad words to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or to Islam, do you think if they say bad words that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will lose his dignity? Do you think he will lose his izzah? No. If you make a big issue out of it, the more you talk about this, the more you make this person famous. Try and explain to them nicely. If they listen, they listen. If they don't listen, leave them. Because our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today has not been seen by 7 billion people. But you know what? On the earth today, there are 1.4 billion Muslims who believe in him. And there's another few billion who are talking about him. Good or bad, we don't care. He is very, very famous, even though he's not here today. That is enough for you to know Allah will protect the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Allah will protect Islam. The best way you, the best you can do is not to say bad words. Don't say bad words. Don't write bad words. Don't react in a bad way. Why? Because the moment you say bad words, if you start swearing, if you say, hey, you, this, that, I will do this, that, then they will say, ah, that's how a Muslim is. They will say, ah, is that how your prophet was? Is that how you people are? No, we need to show good akhlaq. And the, if they don't listen, no problem. Ignore them. They will die the death of not being known. Nobody will care about them. There have been so many people in 1400 years who've said bad things about Islam and bad things about our Prophet. Where are they today? At best, you will find some book in a library. Nobody knows them. If I ask you how many people do you know after the Prophet's death who swore at the Prophet, not when he was alive. We know the ones who were alive, like Abu Lahab. We know Abu Lahab while he was alive. But after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa death, how many people do you know? How many names do you know of people who have swore at our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Put your hands up. Nobody. Not even me. See? Did you see that? Nobody knows them. But how many of you know that your non-Muslim friends, your non-Muslim people or the people who are secular, the people who are not Islamic, they know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, put your hands up. If you, know, if you think they know about him, yes, put your hands up. 
Yes, see? They know about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So his dhikr, his remembrance will be there. Allah has said in the Holy Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَ In Surah Inshirah, Allah said, I will raise your remembrance on the earth. Allah has take that up, taken that up. Okay, Bazi in Salnanan Dine Motik La Yaklas Tikari Yani Hodis in Karchingli, me no understand. Oh, English. Okay. Some people reject Hadith because they approach with only logic. What do you think about this? For example, some people go and pray Salah when they're in their menses. Okay. Thing is, um, the deen is not based on aql and logic. Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, if deen was based on logic, then a person when they do masah, masah on their socks, they would have done masah on the bottom of the socks, not on the top of the socks. Because you think, I'm walking with my socks and I've done wudu, I need to do masa, I should wipe the bottom because the bottom is dirty, not the top. If you think logically, it's wrong. Or for example, I did full wudu. I wash my face, I wash my arms, I wash my, I basically did masa of my head, I wash my feet, then I went and suddenly I let out some wind. I farted, I let out some wind. So now Allah says to me, go back and wash your face again, wash your arms again, wash, you know, do your head again and your feet, but huh? where's the logic? I let something out from there, I went to the toilet, it went down from there. Why do I have to wash my face again? Why do I have to wash my hands? My hands are clean, my face is clean, but no. Deen is not based on logic only. There are some things in the deen based on logic. And some things, they are not logical. You can't work them out. Why? Why did Allah tell us to go around the Kaaba seven times? Hajj? Why? Why did Allah tell us to take stones and throw it at a pillar in Hajj? Why? There's no logic. You can, you can say, oh, you throw the stones because shaitan was there in the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Fine. But today there's no shaitan there. Today there's no shaitan there. But it's symbolic and it's a hukum of Allah. It's a command of Allah. So we need to do it. So this person who's asked people to reject hadith, the thing is if you reject hadith because of logic, you are in a big danger. Because you're making your own religion. If you make your own religion then you have to stand on the day of judgment and try and make Allah accept your religion. Allah has sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam on this earth to teach us our religion. Deen and religion is only accepted through the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. However he practiced it, you have to practice it. If you now say, no, I think, you know, we're in a modern world, we have to live differently, we have to be different. Those days they never had any phones, those days they weren't as smart as us, then you are now claiming you know more and you, you are someone who has the authority to, to do what you want. If so, no problem. You can't claim to be a true Muslim. Because a true Muslim is one who follows the Quran and follows the Sunnah. You can't do it different. If I say, for example, let me give you one example. If I say, I'm sitting here, and I'm going to do my salah like this. This is salah time. Okay, asr has come. Asr, I sit here. I don't move. I say, I say, okay, I'm going to connect with Allah. Allahu Akbar. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka asmaka wa ta'ala jiddika wa la ilaha khayruk. I'm just thinking of Allah. I'm sitting down on the chair. No rakha, no qibla, no darshim. I'm, I'm engaged. I'm thinking of Allah. The purpose was for me to connect with Allah. I say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Rahim. I can put my whole heart in it. I can put my whole focus. But my Salatul Asr won't be done until I don't face the Qibla, I don't stand up, I don't raise my hands, 
I don't tie my hands where the Prophet sallallahu tied him. Even if I say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be... I'm going to be special. I'm going to tie my hands here. Your salah batil. If you get excited, oh, I did one sajda, two sajdas. Allah, I love you so much. Three sajdas, four sajda. Masha Allah. Your salah finished, khalas. It's not accepted. If you say four rakats, I said, no. No way. Six rakats. I want to do two extra rakats. You try two extra rakats, salah not accepted. You have to do exactly as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did. And that's our deen. How to make the world slaving us such as internet, TV, an opportunity to enter Jannah. The thing is, um, I, I would like to ask you, there's a talk that I gave on YouTube um, called... Um, there's a, there's a talk I gave, Easy Way to Jannah. Easy Way to Jannah. Please try and see that talk. And because you can write English, I'm sure you can understand uh, English. So please watch that one. It will tell you many ways to get to Jannah, very simple ways. Um, can we carry on? Or are you guys okay for me to carry on or should I stop? Time over? Okay, Jazakumullah Khair, guys. Thank you very much. Um, I thank you for being a very attentive crowd. Don't go yet. Please don't go yet. They've got a uh, couple of words to say and then you can leave inshallah. But I thank you um, for coming together today and being very attentive. I cannot thank you more. And the only one thing I ask from you is to make dua for me, inshallah. And I will benefit from your dua. I will also make dua for you. And now I will hand it over to Brother Chuck.